This tree species is radically different from every other tree species across the world. Technically this tree is in fact a mistletoe and claims the honour of being the world's largest parasitic plant. G'day, I'm Karen Marie. Welcome to another video on life in the bush. Allow me to introduce you to this tree I'm standing under. Its botanical name is Noitzia floribunda. It grows only in the southwest of Western Australia. The local indigenous Noongar people have been calling this tree Muja for tens of thousands of years and more recent Australians in the last couple of hundred years have been calling it the Western Australian Christmas tree. In this video you will discover what makes this species one of a kind and how it contributes significantly to biodiversity in the bushland. Now I've mentioned the Noongar people because they are the original custodians of much of the land in the southwest of Western Australia. Importantly, I acknowledge that I am filming on Noongar Wadjuk country today. They have cared for this country for tens of thousands of years. Respect. Now there's so much to learn about, so let's get into it. So I've mentioned that this tree is commonly known as the Western Australian Christmas tree, but it doesn't look like a Christmas tree. It's not named that because of its appearance. It's named that because in the lead up to Christmas, these beautiful orange yellow colored flowers come out in abundance. It flowers from October through to January. So if you live locally in Perth, you will be familiar with the Western Australian Christmas tree coming into flower in bushland in the suburbs in the lead up to Christmas. For the Noongar people, however, before European settlement, when the Muja tree was in flower, that was a signal for them to move towards the coast to include seafood in their diet and enjoy those sea breezes over summer. Now I mentioned at the beginning that this Western Australian Christmas tree is actually in fact a mistletoe and the world's largest parasitic plant and that's because mistletoes are parasitic. So usually a mistletoe will grow on the branch, it will latch itself onto the branch of another tree. Here's some footage of a mistletoe growing in a Mary tree. This is what they usually look like where they grow off the branch. If you're wondering how the seed of a mistletoe gets onto the branch of a tree to grow there, watch this to the end and I will put up a link to another video that explains that a little bit further and talks about mistletoe birds and mistletoes. A very interesting topic and in fact there are 97 mistletoes across Australia so I do hope to produce a video on mistletoes for you in the future. So the Noitzia doesn't grow from a branch as other mistletoes do. It instead attaches itself to the roots of other trees, shrubs, grasses, anything growing in the area and grows out of the ground in the form of a tree. So I should explain that parasites, parasitic plants, um, feed from the host plant. The host plant usually being a tree for regular mistletoes and in this case any other plant growing around for the Noitzia. Now they are not complete parasites, they are semi-parasitic or hemi-parasitic which means they're only partially parasitic. They do produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis in their leaves. So in order to extract nutrients and water from the surrounding vegetation it grows a ring around the roots of other plants and sort of cuts into those roots just enough to extract nutrients and water. And here's a photo that a colleague of mine took when he pulled a weed out of the ground and found the white ring around the root of the weed. It is called a Horstorium. And apparently Noitzias have been known to mistake underground power lines as roots and tried to cut into them, causing power outages. Oops. So because Noitzia floribunda is a mistletoe, it doesn't grow true wood like other trees. 
and its branches and trunk are made up of more of a starchy cork like material it's quite bendy in fact I can grab a branch here and bend it to show it to you this is why the tree tends to have a drooping habit the branches tend to droop downwards much like mistletoe and unfortunately sometimes under the weight of the foliage and the flowers the branches can actually snap off young seedlings tend to grow as a shrub for the first 7 to 20 years until such time as they send up a single shoot that will flower for the first time and eventually grow into a tree fertilized flowers develop into fruits starting out green like the ones in this footage and turning into a dry brown fruit as it matures another factor that sets this species apart from other mistletoes is that the noitzia is the only mistletoe that develops dry winged fruits so occasionally when you drive around the southwest of Western Australia you may notice noitzias growing in the middle of paddocks where there's no bush around anymore and only grass but remember they can survive this way because they can still just tap into roots of grass however if there are horses on that land it's possible that the horses can actually eat new seedlings they can easily chomp through the starchy soft branches so if you're a landholder, you may want to fence off areas where new Nutsias are growing to give them a better chance. I mentioned that Nutsia floribunda makes a significant contribution to biodiversity. And that is because although they do take from the surrounding plants somewhat, and they don't harm those host plants, by the way, but they do also then give back to the bushland because they provide an abundance of food sources for the animals. The flowers are a very rich source of nectar for bees, wasps, ants, beetles, butterflies and also nectar feeding birds and insectivorous birds who love to come and feed on the insects feeding on the flowers. The leaves of the Noitzia are said to also be much more highly nutritious than the leaves of surrounding vegetation such as the Banksias. So they give back and bring in a more diverse range of animals to the area which is beneficial for the entire bushland. So that about wraps it up for Noitzia floribunda. I've been really excited about bringing this video to you so I really hope you enjoyed it. I just love Noitzia floribunda. It's such a beautiful and significant plant here in the southwest of Western Australia. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and click on the bell if you want to be notified when new videos are released. I hope to see you next time on Life in the Bush. Enjoy the rest of your day.